In this video, we're going to create a simple number guessing game in C++. The program will create a random integer between 1 and 100, and then the program will continually prompt the user to guess the number, and it will tell the user if they need to guess higher or lower until they get it correct. So first off, we'll use the rand function to generate the random integer. We'll include the C stdlib library where this function is defined so that we can use it. This library also includes the srn function that we're going to use to seed the random number generator. We're going to use the current time as the seed value, so we'll also include the seed time library, which includes the time function, which is going to return the current time. So the first thing we'll do is call srand. And we need to supply srand with a seed value that's going to determine the sequence of random integers that are going to be generated when we call rand. We want the random integer that our program creates to be potentially different each time our program runs. In order to achieve this, we need to supply a different seed value each time our program runs. We could use the current time as a seed value because the current time is going to be different each time our program runs. So the time function from the ctime library is going to return the current time when it's past the argument null. So here we'll have time null to use the current time as the seed value. Now it's probably fine to leave it like this, but technically the time function returns a time underscore t value and srand expects an unsigned int. So we could use an explicit typecast here. We could have unsigned int to ensure that value is cast to the type unsigned int. Next, we'll declare a variable called number of type int, and number is going to store the random integer. We'll use the rand function to help create this random integer. So rand is going to return a random integer between zero and some very large number. But we want to have a random integer in the range one to 100. So we'll use some operations to take this random integer and give us a random integer in the range of 1 to 100. So first, we'll use modulus 100, where the modulus operator is going to give us the remainder of an integer division operation. So here, if we do modulus 100, the only possibilities are remainders in the range 0 to 99. So for example, if the rand function returned the random integer 500, modulus 100 would take that and give us back zero. If we had 501, then modulus 100 would give us back one. If we had 599 as our random integer, modulus 100 would give us back 99. And if the rand function were to give us back 600, then modulus 100 would take that and give us back zero. So this here is going to give us a random integer in the range zero to 99. So if we have zero to 99 and we take that and add one to it, that's going to give us back a random integer in the range one to 100. So all we need to do here is take this and add one to it. And now we're going to have a random integer in the range one to 100. Next, we'll declare an int variable called guess that's going to store the guess that the user enters. Then we'll create a do while loop to continually prompt the user to enter in the guess until they get it right. So here we'll have do while guess does not equal number. So, so long as the user has not correctly guessed the number, we're going to keep the game going. So the first thing we'll do in the loop body is prompt the user to enter the guess. So we'll have here, C out, and then enter guess between one and 100, colon. Then we'll use C in to store the guess the user enters into the guess variable. So we'll have C in and then guess. Next, if the guess the user entered is greater than the number, that means the user needs to guess lower next time. So I'll have here, C out, guess lower, followed by an inline. Else if 
the guess the user entered is less than the number, that means the user needs to guess higher next time. So we'll have here, see out, and then guess higher, followed by an inline. Now, if the guess is not greater than or less than the number, that means it must be equal to the number, in which case the user got it right. And here, for the else case, we'll output here u1 followed by an inline. So, so long as the guess is not correct, the game is going to keep going and the user will keep getting advice as to how to guess next time. When the user does get it right, guess will equal number. And at that point, the game is going to stop. We can now test out our game. So we'll save, compile and run a program. And for our first guess, we'll enter in 50. It says the guess lower, so we'll try 25. It says the guess lower, so we'll try 10. Now it says guess higher, so we'll try 17. It says guess lower, so we'll try 13. It says lower again, so we'll try 12. And now we got it right, and the game is over. So this is how we can create a simple number guessing game in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.